Thank you. Mouse, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Can I, before we start, hey, all the kids, you want to come up here and listen? Come on up here. Come up behind me. Because I'm not holding up between them and the pool, man. Come on. My name's Joe Biden, Vice President Biden. Everybody come on up and stand with me. What's your name? There's okay, chair. Look, folks. I want to set the record straight in a couple things. I'll wait till everybody gets up here. Hi. You're on television, so be good. Okay? You are, yeah. See those the television came in? Hi, Mommy. That's it. TV. All right, can everybody be quiet for just a minute? You're on TV, so you got to be quiet a little bit. Folks, look, uh, this is, I've received, because of the people of the state of Delaware, I've received an awful lot of uh, wonderful honors uh, all my career. The greatest honor was serving you for so long. But this does mean more to me than anything that's happened. My daughter Ash is with me. My daughter Ashley uh, got her first job down here at Kingswood out of school. My, she runs, uh, she's a social worker. Uh, anyway, uh, Bo, uh, Bo is associated here. Anyway, the point I want to make is uh, I owe you all. I owe this neighborhood. I learned so, so much. I was a kid from suburbia. I lived out in Mayfield in a split level home with my grandpa living with us and uh, in a three bedroom home with four kids, my grandpa. And folks, uh, when uh, 19, it's a whole 100 years ago, but I was a senior in high school, and uh, Przicki turned out to be a great athlete in, uh, in, uh, at the University of Delaware, but I was runner up the state scoring championship here in football. I wasn't bad either. <laughs> and, uh, but I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to get more involved. And I realized I lived in a neighborhood where I'd turn on the television and I'd see and listen to Dr. King and others, but I didn't know any black people. No, I really didn't. You didn't know any white people either. That's the truth. So I wanted to work here. And there's my daughter, Ashley. Come on up here, Ash. And so what I did was I came down and I, uh, I applied to the city of Wilmington for a job. And for I was the only white employee here. And uh, I learned so much. I learned so much. I learned that folks that I work with, like uh, Spencer Henry and Lafayette Jackson and a whole range of people, Jamie Rolls, a lot of great, great, great people who are my fellow lifeguards, there were 13 of us. I learned that uh, they treated me. They treated me as an equal. We used to go in what was not as modern as that. We used to go in the key room at lunchtime after a free swim and sit on the floor because it was nice and cool. And remember Boom Boom Cannon and a few other guys that worked here well, as well. And we'd sit there and we'd talk and they'd ask me questions because I really was the only white guy they really knew. And they'd ask me questions about everything, I mean, things that, I, that just startled me. I remember one time, I won't mention which lifeguard said, do I have a jerry can, a five gallon can for gasoline? And I said, no, I don't. I said, but what do you need it for? He said, I'm going down, we're going down to see my grandma in North Carolina. We can't stop at most gas stations. They won't let us stop at most gas stations. I learned, I learned a lot. And I learned that uh, it makes a difference. This was the diving board area. And I was one of the guards. And there were a lot of, there was a three meter board. And you fell off sideways, you landed on the, damp, uh, the darn cement over there. <laughs> and Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. And I did. He, and back in those days, to show how things have changed, one of the things you had to use, if you used pomade in your hair, you had to wear a bathing cap. And so he was up on the board, wouldn't listen to me. I said, hey, Esther, you, off the board, or I'll come up and drag you off. Well, he came off. And he said, I'll meet you outside. My car, this, 
was mostly, these were all public housing behind it. My car, there was a gate out here. I parked my car outside the gate. And I, he said, I'll be waiting for you. He was waiting for three guys in straight razors. Not a joke. There was a guy named Bill Wright, Mouse, the only white guy, and he did all the pools. He was the mechanic. And I said, what am I going to do? He said, come down here in the basement where mechanics, where, where, where all the pool f f filter is. You know, the chain, there used to be a chain that went across the deep end. And he cut off a six-foot length of chain. He folded up. He said, you walk out with that chain. And you walk to the car and say, you may cut me, man, but I'm going to wrap this chain around your head. I said, you kidding me? He said, no, if you don't, don't come back. And he was right. So I walked out with the chain. And I walked up to my car, and they had, in those days, you used to remember the straight race, you'd bang them on the curb, get them rusty, put them in a rain barrel, get them rusty. And I looked at them, but I was smart then. I said, first of all, I said, when I tell you to get off the board, you get off the board, and I'll kick you out again, but I shouldn't have called you, Esther Williams. I apologize for that. I apologize, but I didn't know that apology was going to work. He said, you apologize to me? I said, I apologize for that, not for throwing you out, but I apologize for what I said. He said, okay, close the straight razor and my heart began to beat again. <laughs> I came down here because I remember the first bumper sticker I saw that made me aware when I was in law school, proudly for Holloway, proudly for your dad, first African-American state senator in the state of, in the state of Delaware. Everything about... And by the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. And I tell you what. The men, they're now all men, the guys I work with down here, and they're all guys at the time, they're all good men. Most of them made an awful lot of themselves. And Earl Larkin had a rough time. And some of you knew Earl. I, def I came back as a public defender. I came back to Delaware and I got a fancy job with the oldest law firm in the state. But the city was burning. It was burning down here. And I, I couldn't do it. So I quit and became a public defender. And the first trial I had, I walked into court as a public defender with another guy named Eddie Sobosinski, a defender. I'd only been admitted to the bar one week. And Earl Larkin was in chains around his ankles and on his, on his, on his wrist. And they were chained together, so on a belt. And he said, who's going to try the Larkin case? I just, just got started. And he was aptly named. His name was Judge Stiftel. And uh, he said, Sobosinski said, well, that's my colleague. He just joined the public defender's office. He said, You'll, will you, in fact, defend him? Uh, so she t he turned to Larkin and said, he'll defend you. I said, whoa, 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 Your Honor. I know nothing about the case. He said, I'll give you it till tomorrow, but you draw the jury today. And he looked at Larkin and he said, do you mind if he even represents you? And I'll never forget what he said. I learned a lot. He said, and I mean, I mean it sincerely. He looked at me and he said, one hunky is just as bad as any other. I'll take whoever you send me. And here's what I want to tell you about Earl. Here's what I want to tell you about the neighborhood and the heart. I defended him. He got beat up right on, on the other side of the field here. He walked along the tracks. He was a sailor in a sailor's uniform, the guy who he beat up and robbed. And so I thought he was innocent. I kept the jury out five hours. But they convicted him. And I felt so bad. So I'd go down to the old prison all the time. They had little wooden tables and little two little chairs in a big dome you'd sit under where you'd be interviewed. And I was sitting there, Councilwoman, and I, the third time, saying, I'm appealing this case. And finally, he took the table, he flipped it up, and he said, jumped up, and the guards came and grabbed him. He said, don't you understand, Joe? I did it. I did it. But here's the point. He cared about me. This is a man who saw me bleeding because I saw this guy going to jail and I thought he was innocent. There's character. 
even in great problems. There's so much character in this neighborhood. There was so much character back then, too. So many people didn't get a shot. So many people didn't get a shot. Who could be standing right where Lisa's standing today, a lot earlier. Could be standing where I'm standing today. Let me end by saying, let me end by saying, I was a pretty darn good lifeguard. <laughs> yeah, man. I taught swimming, too. And I remember going over, we used to play the other pools, and we played basketball at lunchtime, remember? We went over to Riverside, we played, and um, someone on the other team threw the ball to me by accident. And they looked at me and said, oh, God, I thought you were on my team. I'm thinking, I'm the only white boy within 20 miles. <laughs> remember, I'd get invited down to Baby Grand. I walk in and say, who's this guy? And they say, he's ours. He's ours. You've always had my back. The neighborhood's always had my back, and God willing, I've always had your back, and I'll always have it as long as I'm around. I love you. It's a great honor. Thank you very much. And if I were still a lifeguard, I'd say, time to get in the pool. Thanks, everybody. And Councilwoman, thank you so, so much for this honor. Thank you. So how are you guys doing? Who here is going to be president someday? Raise your hand. All right. I'll tell you one more story on the way out. You know what? There was a guy, when I first started, black folks weren't even allowed to vote very much, very easily. That's how long ago it was. And guess what I got to do? Eight years ago, I got to be in the Wilmington train station, looking over the Third Street Bridge that had been burned to the ground, most of it thinking nothing was ever going to get any better 40 years ago. Waiting for a black man to pick me up to take me 124 miles to be sworn in as president and vice president of the United States. That's progress. We can make more. God love you all.